everybody, it's Oscar Sketches and today I'm going to show you how to make this otter plush. Um, I uh, think it would be nice and fun to uh, try and make one together. Uh, I'm going to be making one anyway, so I thought, um, yeah, why not just take you guys along for the journey? I think that would be fun. Um, yeah, other than that, um, I think this is probably going to be a three hour video showing the full process because I haven't seen any anything like that on youtube ever about how to make a plush um i mean there has been like some tutorial videos and most tutorial videos um are aimed at uh, people who already know a little bit about plush making um and uh i i've heard and, and experienced i guess that most people tend to be very um i don't know like uh secretive i guess about their process and i just want to uh um yeah i guess show you how the flush is made <laughs> um yeah uh and I, I think we should probably just like hop on into it and uh, any thoughts i have i'll share um i'm just gonna try to make this as um uh inclusive a guide as possible um so anybody who wants to follow along can follow along um and yeah we'll uh, we'll see what happens um i think i want to start with uh um the necessities like well what are things that you're going to need um to pull this off uh, and i have everything laid out right here um i'll see this is uh just a, a miniature vacuum cleaner um and a one of these things um a lint roller i think they're cold um those are not um uh, required um, but they are very helpful if you're working with uh, fluffy fabric like faux fur or like teddy fabric or something um, and uh, they'll just make your life a lot less painful um, the first thing you're actually going to need is a pattern and I have made uh, this pattern right here um, this one was the first prototype this one was the second prototype and this is the third iteration of this pattern so I'm pretty sure it's, it's done um, but uh, we'll see uh, how this one turns out um, and maybe I'll want to make some other changes um, regardless though the finished pattern is not going to look very different um, if, if there's going to be changes at all um, and I'm going to have this one in the description you can use this one for free because um, it's a very simple pattern uh, and I don't want to make people pay for that um, and I have not shown how I made, like how I went from this to this to this, um, but I will probably uh, make a video like that sometime in the future where I'll just go over how to pattern because I haven't seen any tutorials on that at all. So uh, I think that would be nice uh, to do and try and nice to show, I suppose. Um, yeah, safety eyes are optional, um, but I like using them. Uh, if you want, you can just embroider them on. Uh, I also have a little plastic bag. Um, this one is reused from... Uh, I don't know what came with it. I think it was a pillow. <clears throat> um, and I'm just going to use this as a like uh, trash bag, I guess. Just uh, uh, It's nice to have one near you that you can just toss whatever thread you have um, cut off into because uh, I feel like it helps uh, really keep things clean and organized. Um, next, what is absolutely required is fabric. Um, I'm going to be using these two. Um, and you can use whatever kind of colors you want. You can use uh, two tones, like what I'm using. You can use one tone. You can use whatever kind of colors you want to use. You could use like as many as you want. Um, I've used two on this one, or just like a white underside and a brown uh, top side um, but you could use maybe like pink for the inside of the ears or um, for the underside of the feet you know you can use pretty much anything you want um, you can make them blue or green or like purple whatever you want <laughs> typically what's um, you use one uh, color um, per uh, pattern piece However, if you want, you can also cut these pieces up into different shapes and, and use different colors. Um, I've made this pattern as efficient as possible. So there's no like so legs uh, that need to be sewn onto the belly or onto the body or whatever. Um, 
but you could uh, make a pattern that's much more complicated and like uh, have separate legs um, that you can have in different colors and whatever um, but I'll talk more about that I think in the pattern video whenever that's gonna happen um, uh, but that is possible uh, you can use whatever colors you want uh, usually what I like to do so I'll provide this file as well I'll uh, in MS paint or something I'll like drop in colors um, to see what they'll look like um, on the uh, the finished product um, with something as simple as this one is pretty easy to imagine but I have I also have um, patterns with uh, uh, let's take a look at this one for example um, this sheep uh, has multiple uh, pieces per leg uh, and like for the face as well like there's so many pieces on here um, if you wanted to make a very complicated like um, pattern uh, and you weren't sure where to put, where to put the colors I will always have like an over, uh, overview uh, sort of thing where you can drop those into the the sheep pattern will be available at some point as well um, but that one's the first prototype as well so I have to do some more prototyping before I can finish that pattern um, anyway you've already seen this one it's a uh, uh, these are fabric scissors um, very helpful uh, when cutting fabric because normal uh, scissors you either like uh, blanchy scissors or uh, you won't be able to cut the fabric properly so fabric scissors highly recommend um, then this uh, is just a paintbrush or like some sort of object um, that is this kind of long uh, and uh, relatively sturdy for stuffing later on like if you want to get stuffing because uh, we're going to be stuffing from the head uh, from the neck where the, the head attached to the body um, if you have trouble like getting the stuffing all the way to the tip of the tail you might want to use a tool like that to uh, make that a little bit easier um, finally I have some thread and needles um, and you might want to use uh, some like embroidery yarn uh, like smaller scissors maybe even tags uh, if you want to embroider on the details uh, like if you don't have safety eyes you might want to embroider on some eyes um, and then stuffing I've got uh, stuffing over here uh, this is just regular polyfill stuffing uh, like this um, and you could uh, could use whatever stuffing you have lying around like uh, I don't think it matters that much if you want you can use uh, beads or just you know regular polyfill or maybe you have mochi stuffing or like anything else really um, uh, you could even use fabric scraps uh, to stuff um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for all the uh, the materials that you are going to need. Um, I'll see you when I'm gonna be uh, tracing on the fabric pieces. Oh yeah, you might need a, a pen, a pen to trace on fabric pieces. Um, but uh, we'll 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 talk about that in the next clip. Okay, so here's what I was talking about in terms of the the pens. Um, you might want to use uh, whatever you can get your hands on. Honestly, a fine liner or a ballpoint pen will probably work. The reason I'm using um, this uh, right now is because the fabric that I'm using is very annoying <laughs> and it won't, a uh, ballpoint pen and such won't really show up very well. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, Tombow Art uh, Water Sobel pa pen. Um, for the lighter fabric and for the darker fabric I'm going to try a paint marker. I've got uh, a Posca here uh, in, a, uh, in lighter tones. Uh, I've got this one. This one's almost out of ink uh, and then this one is, is green and shows up really well. Um, you're just going to have to see what you can use to uh, uh, trace the, the, the pattern onto the fabric and if worse comes to worse you don't really have to. Uh, you could just like uh, pin the uh, the pattern pieces onto the fabric and just cut around um, is also an option uh, but this uh, helps me personally uh, because it helps me see where to sew um, uh, so so that's why I prefer using this um, yeah it just it's gonna depend on the kind of fabric you have which one is uh, uh, which which kind of pen you're going to want to use 
um, but you can, you're, you're clever, you can figure that out, right? Um, and uh, this is another thing, these are some pins. Um, these aren't required, but they are very helpful, and I personally um, much prefer using pins over not using pins. Um, so, yeah, um, you might see me do some, some bits where I uh, don't use pins and some where I do and you'll see, oh, I'm going to take you along for the whole journey. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a very in-depth tutorial and I'm just going to walk you through all the steps. Um, yeah, uh, the next step is going to be uh, deciding what colours we want to use for the pattern. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to start my timer because I am timing um, everything I do uh, just for pricing purposes. Uh, you don't have to do that because uh, this pattern is only uh, personal use, it's not commercial use. Um, so, uh, we have this uh, otter pattern, right? Uh, and I have two kinds of fabrics that I want to use, two different shades. Um, I'm going to want to use uh, uh, those uh, colours at my disposal to uh, reflect uh, an otter, an otter's colouring, basically. Um, this is because I want to make mine a little bit more realistic, um, and you might want to do something else. So, like, this is just the way that I'm going to do it, uh, and that is your uh, your choice. It is way too big to fit in frame, um, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to attempt to show what's going on there. So, um, ooh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Poking my pants. Ugh. Okay. Um, <laughs> we have a cute little face. Um, for the face, there is a couple different pieces. Uh, we have uh, the side of the face, which is this piece F2. We have the top of the face, which is this piece F1, uh, and then we have the ear, which is E1. Um. Okay, so if you see, uh, F1 is going to go here, and F2 is going to go here. So I'm just going to go unmarried on this side. Okay, so F2 is this piece, uh, F1 is this piece, and then E1 is going to go here. Yeah, I hope you can see that. Um, so, uh, the face is a good example, because we have the side of the face, uh, which is the lighter tone, we have the top of the face, which is uh, the darker tone. We have the back of the ear, which is the darker tone, and the inside of the ear, which is the lighter tone. Uh, I'm going to use that same uh, concept uh, with the uh, the new pattern, the pattern pieces that I've got going on. Um, for the body, it's pretty simple. Uh, the body is going to be uh, uh, the body. Let's see. Yeah. What I called it right here. Uh, B1 and B2. B1 is going to be the darker brown and B2 is on the inside is going to be the lighter brown. Um, and then all that's left is the bottom of the feet, uh, which are these pieces FL1 and FL, uh, FL1 and BL1. Uh, FL1 stands for front leg one uh, and BL1 stands for back leg one. Um, if you're wondering why this so many uh, <laughs> numbers going on. It's because I have a uh, naming convention that I use for all my patterns. So in any pattern that I have, you're going to have uh, any number of F for the face, any number of E for the ear, uh, any number of B for the body, uh, any, num any number of BL for the back leg, and any number of FL for the front leg. Um, and uh, the reason I'm just numbering them here is because uh, that helps keep track um, of all the pieces. Uh, okay, so um, we just uh, talked about this. I'm going to use uh, the light fabric for the underside of the feet. I'm going to use the dark fabric for the top side of the face. I'm going to use a uh, light fabric for the uh, side of the face. I'm going to use light and dark uh, for the inside of the ear. 
uh, and the outside of the ear, <laughs> the ear as a whole. We're going to use the light fabric uh, for the inside of the body or like the underside of the body and we're going to use the dark fabric for the um, uh, the, the main part of the body, I guess. So uh, I'm going to just make a little pile. This one's dark, this one's light, and this one's both. Um, and then I am going to put those aside and grab my fabric. Uh, I've got my fabric over here. The first thing to determine is which is the top side and which is the bottom side. Um, so most fabrics will have a, uh, a nice side and a less nice side. <laughs> um, with most fabrics it's a little bit easier to tell which side is the preferable side and which side is the um, non-preferable side. Uh, with this one it's a little harder to see but this uh, side of the fabric is a little bit coarser and this side is a little bit finer. Uh, I'm going to want to use this side of the fabric. So uh, that means I'm going to be drawing on the ugly side I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to find um, uh, where I want to cut. I have already used this one before. So right there. Um, there are already uh, bits and things cut out. Um, I'm just going to lay this one flat. Um, and for fuzzy fabric like this, one other thing to keep in mind is the fur direction. Um, that is not so important for um, uh, for like flat fabrics, um, but for fuzzy fabrics that have hairs like this, the fur direction is very important because when you pet your plush, you want to go alongside the um, uh, the hairs. So um, I'm just gonna look at these hairs and check which direction are they going. If I pet it, which feels the best? So this is against the hair and this is with the hair. This like to the side or to the side um, feels very similar. Um, but this direction, this way, is where the hair goes. So I'm going to want to keep that in mind when I'm cutting my pattern pieces, which means if I put it this way, um, the hair is going to the hair is going to be going down like that. Um, so we're going to want to keep this orientation, um, and I'm going to lay my fabric flat on the table. Then, <laughs> once everything is laying flat, I'm going to grab a piece um, and you might think, oh hey, that's going to fit really nicely over there, right? However, uh, you do have to keep in mind again that fur direction. When you have the bottom paw of the otter, I'm going to grab this one again because this is a nice show model. Um, this is the front leg, this is the back leg. Um, the pointy bit is going to be over here. So we're going to want the hairs, if we're going to want to pet this, uh, to go this way towards the pointy bit, which is where we want the fur to go. Um, or if you want, you can also do it this way. For the bottom of the feet, it doesn't matter that much. I prefer doing it that way. So, um, if you want, uh, you can use a little arrow uh, to indicate where you want the fur to go. So I'm going to draw on a little arrow like that, um, so I know. Oh, sorry. So I know uh, which direction I want, uh, which orientation I want to use for this piece. Um, Okay, so if you remember the hair 
goes this way. Yeah, so it goes downwards. So instead of this way, we're going to want to use this orientation. Um, and if you want uh, to be extra conservative with your fabric, you don't have to put this piece here. You could also put this piece here and then use something else that does need to point in that direction to go that way. So for the back leg, uh, I'm just going to trace along the edge of this piece right here. Uh, very easy. Just do it like this. And you have a, uh, a piece traced onto the fabric. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, now, if you check on your pattern or on this example for uh, on this this example uh, prototype you'll see that it doesn't have just one back leg it has two uh, so we're gonna want to get two of these um, because this piece is symmetrical uh, we will not be needing to flip this one so you can just put another one over here and do the same thing You are going to want to um, keep at least a little bit of distance between um, these pieces. You don't want to put them right up next to each other. Uh, this is what's called the seam allowance, um, which we will be talking about more when we get to sewing. Uh, when you're using a sewing machine, um, that is uh, going to be, you're going to need more seam allowance than if you were going to be sewing by hand. Um, I'm also keeping uh, like roughly around a centimeter or half a centimeter uh, between the edge uh, of the fabric um, just so there is a little bit of additional fabric around uh, the pattern piece. So this one's done. We put this one aside. Um, this one is the same uh, direction, orientation. So I'm just gonna keep tracing this on. like that. I'm going to do another one and this one I'm also not going to flip because it's symmetrical. next the side of the face uh, if we look at this plush we're going to want to pet it this way meaning the orientation is like that that's why we want a third direction to go um so this is where we cycle back to conserving your fabric. Um, this one has a pointy bit that we can, we can use this pointy bit for. Um, so we are going to need two of this piece. You could do it like this or we could flip it around and do it like this. It, for this um, piece it doesn't really seem to matter that much. Um, I think actually this one is more uh, conserves more fabric. Uh, you can always uh, just also put it somewhere else. I think I will because I want to be as 
Um, so I for it. Um, I just want to use my fabric as efficiently as possible. As possible. Okay. So. gonna round this piece right here um however you might have noticed a little slit right there um we are also going to trace that so right there like so so we have a little line right there okay that's where the ears are now um this one is not symmetrical, so we have the face, we have one that is oriented this way, and then we have one that is oriented this way. So we're going to mirror this piece. direction is down like this down like this and we are just going to trace this one on as well double checking my third direction because sometimes it changes as well uh, for these sorts of blankets it's, it tends to So this is just a prototype so it doesn't really matter that much um i just want to make sure so it's this way or is it this way there's a little bit of um wiggle room with this as well so it's like like roughly I'm just going to put it here <laughs> and we're going to do the foot one. If you want, you can mark the ones you flipped, uh, maybe with like a little dot or an X or anything. Um, some people find that helpful. Uh, for me, uh, this one is this pattern is so simple that it doesn't really matter to me. Um, okay, uh, what else? We have the ear. Um, Think about this one. Uh, which way do we want to pet the ear? Uh, do it upwards, I think. It doesn't really matter. You're probably not going to be petting this ear so much, but just to, for the the way it looks, it's uh, uh, it's helpful. So 
uh, if you think about it, uh, which direction would you want it to go? You could do it like this, you could also do it like this. Uh, I'm going to do it upwards, like that. So, uh, this way. And if the fur goes. Mm. Mm, like roughly this direction. I'll just do it like this. I hope the chainsaw in the background is relaxing. <laughs> People are always doing garden work over here. Always garden escaping. Okay. So that's the ear. I also mirrored this one because um, it's so much cool. Then the last piece. Um, it's the body also. Uh, for the ears, I've now done two pieces because I want the inside of the ear to be um, uh, this light fabric. I want the outside of the ear to be dark fabric. So why do I have two inside pieces? It's because we have two ears. So for an ear like this, we're going to want this one four times. Um, even if we have, uh, you know, the side of the face only twice and the back feet only twice and the front feet only twice, we want four ears. Um, because we want the inside to be light, we're going to use, uh, we're going to do two uh, with this fabric. And because we want the outside to be dark, we're going to use this one another uh, another two times uh, with the dark fabric. Uh, so for this one, uh, which direction do we want to go? Uh, typically, uh, you're going to want to pet the belly this way and the uh, paws this way. But because these two are in the same um uh, on the same piece, uh, we're going to sacrifice a little bit of that uh, and just go like down the middle somewhere like this. This fabric's so weird in terms of like fur direction. So where does the fur go? It's like this way. It's not always the case. Um,
And now we're going to flip it. And now we have traced all the light pieces onto the light fabric. Uh, we're going to switch to the darker fabric. So, I'm going to put this aside. And I'm going to grab the darker fabric. Now, obviously, uh, this is not going to show up on the darker fabric. So, uh, we're going to want to use a lighter... Um, sort of fa fabric pen to um, to use instead. So find the ugly side, find the fur direction. This one we're going to want to pet this way. We are also going to need this one twice and once to near it. If you don't have much space to work with, these can be a little bit tricky. Um, but you could just take your time. There's no rush for this. Uh, this is one of the most important steps. Um, so do it slowly at your own pace. There is no rush. Unfortunately, most of these markers I have are out of ink so I think I want to use the green one because it's the most fragrance. Uh, 
another thing to keep in mind with these sorts of things is if they um, soak through uh, the fabric. Because some fabrics that are a little bit thinner, um, the, uh, uh, they might allow the ink to bleed through on the other side and that might um, cause problems. Uh, so you might have uh, a green bits on your altar and you really didn't want to. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. Usually these paint markers stay where they're put, but things like alcohol markers bleed um, and sometimes even just like uh, water-based ink bleeds as well. Uh, so just be careful about that. Some, um, there's, some of these uh, uh, are easier to wash out than others as well. Um, so, uh, for example, that water-based ink that I used for the, the previous one, uh, you can wash the next time that plush goes into the washing machine or you wash it by hand, uh, that is going to wash out. Um, it's not going to stain. Um, but other inks might stain, so uh, consider that. Maybe use a, uh, like test it on a corner of the, the fabric. Um, and keep in mind that this sort of thing is going to happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, just like find a method and a, a pen that works for you. Uh, the only reason this one is so annoying <laughs> It's because this doesn't have a flat back. Usually what you'll see with um, both the fabrics and such is they'll have a the furry side and they'll have a, a, a back side. And that back side is much easier to, to draw on. And typically you can just use a, a ballpoint pen. Um, but this is a uh, just a, a blanket that I bought <laughs> somewhere for very cheap. So it wasn't supposed to be used this way, but that's okay. If you're not pinning these pieces down, um, keep checking uh, whether the... Oh, um, whether the, the lines line up. Especially with big pieces like these and fabric that slides all over the place like this. Because <laughs> trust me, you're going to want to do this well once instead of doing it rushed multiple times. This is probably one of the most annoying fabrics that I have <laughs> to work with. So it really just does not stay put. I 
But it is very cute and soft and cuddly, so it's worth it, I think. <laughs> I do not have a lot of space to work with yet. <laughs> Almost done. Oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> All right, that's the main body. Now, like we said before, we're going to want to we're going to want two more of these. And I'm just going to go find a gap somewhere. I can get these. Like right here. Okay, now the last piece. Uh, we only have one top of the head, so we just need the two ones. And if we're going to be petting it, we want to pet it this way or this way. 
Um, I think I want to do it this way. All this way. It doesn't really matter for this one. Usually I do full heads this way and then muzzles this way. Um, but because this is one piece, uh, we're gonna have to compromise. So I think we'll do it this way. Uh, that's it. That's all the pattern pieces to raced. Um, next, we're going to want to cut the, uh, the pattern pieces out. Um, and I'm going to switch to a different angle to show you that. Alright, we are on to cutting the pattern pieces. Um, yeah, the, I, I typically try to keep this... Um, like a pretty large plastic bag um, over top of my fabric uh, like below, below my fabric so I can uh, catch most of the fluff um, that's gonna fall as I'm cutting um, this is not so important when you're using uh, things like cotton uh, or like any any flat fabric really but if you look at this uh, this sort of stuff sheds a lot um, and it's not very fun to uh, um, have to clean up but uh, it's, it's one of the things that we sacrifice um, well one of the sacrifices we make uh, for having fluffy washes <laughs> um, I sometimes will pluck uh, this, uh, the, uh, the fabric a little bit to get most of this stuff out, but, uh, um, I, I'll be honest, I don't know how much that helps, <laughs> if at all, um, and, uh, I'll, I'll typically just do it when there's a, a big cut or Whatever. Also, I much prefer using paper um, bags because when you're using plastic, uh, the uh, <laughs> everything starts to stick to everything else. So uh, it's it's a struggle. Um, this is why using different types of fabrics really can like add to or take away from the time you spend on a plush so that is also something to keep in mind um typically with like um uh faux furs or something you can cut them much easier and uh, if you just cut through the backing with um a uh an exacto knife or a box cutter um instead of a, uh, a pair of scissors um, but uh, like we already discussed this one doesn't have a backing uh, this one just has more fluff on the back um, but yes uh, so this is one of the most annoying things if you're working with this kind of fabric to do uh, so if you are a beginner um, I hope 
you watch the tutorial all the way through before attempting anything. Um, however, uh, um, if you are a beginner, uh, I would recommend using uh, flat fabrics, uh, at least for the first time, uh, so you can get a feel for the pattern and not have to uh, um, struggle with this sort of thing. <laughs> Okay, so as I'm cutting, uh, you'll see I'm cutting around the lines. Um, I'll show you once I put this piece cut out. I'm, sure, uh, I'm cutting around the lines for the seam allowance because we are going to be sewing right on top of that green line. Um, so we are going to need some space for the sewing machine to uh, grip onto because if we cut it off right here, the sewing machine can't grip onto the, the fabric. Um, so we're going to uh, to leave like a centimeter or so, or maybe more, maybe less, just what you have room for. Um, and we are going to cut this um, relatively close to the, uh, uh, the shape of the pattern. So, uh, because there's a um, little triangle there. I cut that bit out. Uh, right. right there is the triangle. Uh, and I cut this bit out right there. Um, and I'm going to go round. Uh, here's the foot. Uh, I'm going to go round here as well. Um, Having this uh, plastic bag here uh, just makes the clean up a lot easier. So it's not like it's not required, um, but it's gonna save you pain. <laughs> right. For some reason, this stuff is just so annoying to cut as well. <laughs> it's very um, smooth. So it slides off everything, even my scissors. Very fun, very fun. Yeah, um, yeah so I just pluck this a little bit. But you see, like, it's just not coming off my hands. <laughs> So whether this is going to give me more or less fuss to deal with, I do not know. Um, it's like magic. <laughs> they just fly right back to my hand. So uh, uh, if you have paper bags, <laughs> use those, but I'm using these because uh, uh, recycling is ugh, better than just like throwing the plastic away. I'm still gonna throw it away, but <laughs> it'll have at least one more purpose. Have had at least one more purpose, or like fulfilled at least one more job. Okay, I am rambling. Yeah, so, um,. This is also why I love using these things. I'll check my sleeve, it's like it's full of these, but it'll just roll and they'll stick to um get them off. Um I have also tried using one of these things to um uh, get the fuzz off the edges of the seam. Um but it doesn't work quite as well as I would like. Um, you can do this, um, it just takes a while, so I don't know if it's worth it. Um, it's 
so not fuzz down. All right. Oh, it's everywhere. It's all over the floor. <laughs> I put up with this. <laughs> I always say that, and then once the um, the, the altar is finished, I'll be like, "Oh my gosh, I love it! I'm so happy with this!" and blah blah blah. It looks so nice. Okay, um, I am now cutting out the top uh, of the head. One thing to keep in mind with this one is that it has a dart. So I'll show you what that is in moments. Um, right here we have the uh, hat and piece, um, and this uh, V-shape in the uh, on the top of the hedge right there, um, that is a dart, we're going to sew that up. Um, so the reason you cut it out in the pattern piece right here is so that you can see where it goes and trace it onto the fabric, um, but right here we want to keep this um, this dart right here um we want we don't want to cut into this bit we will just want to keep it like this um and i'll show you what to do once we get to sewing the head um so just don't cut that bit out if you do it's not the end of the world um but it's just easier to, to keep it like this So I'm just going to go through all the pieces and cut them out. Um, and I would recommend that you take breaks. Because um, this otter, if I'm not like explaining everything every single step of the way, I can finish one in like a little under or over t uh, three hours. Um, which is still a lot of work. So um, do yourself a favour don't try to finish everything at once um and take breaks when you need them um i am taking breaks every time i uh end the recording uh i just take a break to um, transfer it over to my laptop um and like i don't know watch like a youtube video or something uh, and chill for a second. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> I would love to someday have a studio or something where I can just do this stuff. Um, that is, you know, not my bedroom. <laughs> okay, there's no like. There is no avoiding this, unfortunately. Um, okay, uh, this is another fun trick that I didn't know about until I bought one of these, is that you can change the stickers out and it'll be sticky again. So you can get all the fuzz up your trousers. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, 
Anyway, uh, I think that was all the dark fabric. Um, so this one. Don't use this kind of fabric. Use like pinky or fleece. It's so much easier to work with, <laughs> and it looks good too. So don't worry about cutting everything out exactly. Uh, it's better to have more seam allowance than less seam allowance because uh, you can always cut stuff out later. Uh, you can't, unfortunately, um, extend the length of the fabric, uh, at least not easily. This is some of the hardest part. <laughs> At least for me. Or the most annoying, I guess. The sewing's pretty easy. Um, if you know what to do. Was done. One more thing about the side of the face, which is this piece right here, um, this one, F2, uh, is it has that little uh, slit right there. Uh, and we are going to cut that one. So I am going to find this uh, line here and I'm going to cut through right there. So there's a slit there. The other one is over here. I'm going to do the same thing. So, right there's the line, and I'm going to cut right there. No further than that. Just that line.
Once we are almost done cutting out the pieces, almost done, just a bit of clean up, uh, and then we move on to pinning. And after that, it's sewing time. I'm excited for the sewing because this um this bit's always the the prep work. It's always I don't know the the least fun to me. Just want to get some making stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, I have got everything cut out to my liking. Uh, I'm gonna. Grab these pieces, maybe clean them up a little bit. And I'm just going to put them aside. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do is just kind of shake them out. Um, but it doesn't really get rid of too much fuzz. Um, okay. Now, uh, one thing I can do is I can go over everything and just like try to pick everything up with the, the lint roller, but um, this is also where, for me anyway, this thing comes in, the mini vacuum. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna cut the video here and just clean up right now, because uh, I need a clean space in order to work. Uh, for you it might be different, um, you might prefer to do all the clean up at the end, but I'm just going to uh, take a moment to clean everything up uh, and then we can move on to painting. Okay, I've got all the pieces laid out here uh, and I'm just going to uh, uh, pin them together. Uh, this is the last bit of prep work um, that I'll be doing and then we can move on to sewing. Um, so. The first thing we're going to start with is the ears, because that is simplest. So we're going to find a back piece of the ear and a front piece of the ear. Uh, mine, uh, my back piece is, uh, is dark and my inner piece is uh, light. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the, the ugly side or the side that you've drawn on is on the outside. So I'm going to turn this one over. There's the, uh, the beautiful side and there's the beautiful side on this one and we're gonna put this together like a sandwich. Um, and we're gonna lay it on top of each other. And then I'm gonna take a pin, gonna stick it through and pin these in place. I'm just gonna do two pins and that's enough for this one. So that's one ear pinned. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. there like a sandwich on here and one here and you can you can pin it any way you like if you want to use more pins use more pins if you want to use fewer pins use fewer pins uh, it's your choice really I find two pins for this uh, uh, this sort of shape works well for me so I'm gonna set these aside um, up next, the feet do not need to be pinned, so I'm going to put those aside. At least not yet. We'll deal with those later. Um, now, for the head, we're going to start with the top of the head, and we're going to pin this dart. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this V shape, and we're going to find this point and that point where the back side meets the the dart. So we're going to find these two points. We're going to fold this over like this. I'm going to pinch that together so those two points are on top of each other. I'm going to stick a pin through from here, stick it in to there. And we're going to pin this like that. Or you could also do it like this one. Put it down and do it like that. Uh, as long as these two points right there, this one and this one are on top of each other, you're good. You're good. Okay, 
Um, if you want, you can also already put a uh, piece of the face on there. I'm gonna grab this one. Okay, for the way that the face lines up, you have this little line right there. That is the top of the snout, connects right there. And then you have a line that goes upwards a little bit. That one goes there. And then you have this line, which is this line. I always start at the top of the head. So I find this point, and I find this point. And I stick a needle through, pin, pin it in place. And I'll find this spot just before it dips down. And I'll pin it in place and just make sure that it connects to this line right there. Okay, that's the face for now. I'm going to put that aside as well. And then we move on to the body. So I'm going to find... Oh yeah, for the face, again, it's important that you uh, pin the beautiful side to the beautiful side and the, that the, the ugly side is on the outside because we'll be sewing along those lines so they need to be visible okay now we're going to find the body piece this one is b1 and then we're going to find the b2 that matches it Okay. Uh, first we're going to turn this one over so this is the ugly side we're going to turn it over to the pretty side like so okay now we're going to find body piece b2 that lines up like this right there What is important is that this is the beautiful side right there and on top of that we have the ugly side so if we turn it inside out there's the beautiful side on this side and the beautiful side on that side and then the ugly side right there and the ugly side right there um okay what is important with the orientation for this one is that the tail this is the move this over this right here is the tail if you have this little uh under piece of the tail connects right there to the other piece uh, to the to the tail on the side <laughs> okay uh first thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to the back leg i'm gonna find this point and i'm gonna find this point and i'm gonna pin those together i'm gonna go stab right through both of those points and put them together. Next, I'm going to find this point and this point. I'm going to do the same thing through and stabbed. So now it's pinned together right there and right there. Uh, if you want, you can do another pin right there just to make sure everything stays in place and we're going to do that because this fabric tends to slide around a lot. Do the same thing, make sure that these lines line up. This one and this one. Okay, we're not going to pin the bottom of the feet together because uh, this right there is where this piece goes eventually. Like that. But we're not ready for that yet. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave that open. Um, then I'm going to pin this point to the bottom of the tail. Right there. And don't worry if it doesn't line up exactly. Um, it just needs to line up approximately. Okay. Uh, same thing. This point 
And this point. And end. And this point. And this point. And end. This point. And this point. And end. This point right here. And this point. And pinned. Same thing again. Right there. And it's pinned. So I'm gonna do that right here too. Where the uh, the armpits, I guess. Oops. Right there. And then the bottom of the front foot. Right there. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna skip this bit again. Find the front of the foot. Or if it's a little bit hard to see, like with this shape, if you're not quite sure where it connects, you can also always just skip a point and see where it lines up. So this one is clearer. This is the top. And this is the top. So put these together. See, oh, it lines up like this. And then this one lines up there. And then I think actually this point is part of that foot because um, it curves up uh, and it curves down. Curves up and curves down. So don't connect this, uh, connect it here. So it goes up once, and then we have this bit as well again. Okay. Uh, connect these pieces, these points, and then for the neck, this bit, and this bit, stab it through. And then for this last bit, neck, it's important, you only do this point. Right there, and right there, and leave this open. Because if you attach this, um, like this, uh, this is where the head's going to attach. <laughs> so we want a circle where the head's going to go. This is half a circle like this, and then half the head is going to be attached on there. Okay, uh, now this is pinned. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but mirrored on the other side. So, same thing. Beautiful side up. Ugly side up. And start pinning.
Right, so my stun. The reason we do the pinning, even though it's technically not necessary, is to keep the uh, um, uh, the pattern pieces in place so they don't slide around as we're sewing. Which is especially useful for this kind of fabric that just like slides everywhere and doesn't have uh, you know, doesn't naturally like stay put. So, uh, this is pinned. Uh, I'm gonna go set up my sewing machine and we'll get to sewing. The fun part! Woo. Okay, uh, we are going to move on to sewing. First, I want to give a little bit of a warning that the sewing machine can be kind of loud. I don't know how loud it will be on the recording, um, but uh, yeah, just, just a warning. Um, I'm going to start with the ears, so these we pinned first. Um, we're going to identify the bottom of the ears. So we have uh, the shape where this, the, um, this is the flat side and then we have the curve going around here. We're going to keep this side open, so we're not going to sew here. We're going to sew from here all the way along to here. sewing machine really does not do so well with this sort of fabric but um right now I have some from here all the way along over to there um by the way if you want to do this by hand by all means you can definitely do that um you don't need a sewing machine but it's just a lot faster with the sewing machine so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these uh, long bits of fabric that are uh, that would get in the way if we were to turn this over. Um, so I'm basically just going to trim uh, all of this until I have uh, a half a centimeter maybe um, to the the actual seam. Okay, now we have this ear. I'm going to start my timer because I forgot. <laughs> yeah. So now we have an ear. Uh, what we can do is we can turn it inside out. And now we have an ear with a lighter inside and a darker outside. And if you fold it, like this, you have a cute little little ear. So that one's done. We're going to set this aside and we're going to do the next one. In the exact same way. I'm going to give my sewing machine a little bit more room because it does not enjoy this specific type of fabric. I don't know if that's helping with my so. Oh yes, and make sure you pin, you pull out these uh, these pins as you're sewing them right before you 
hit them because you want, don't want your needle to hit one of these pins because it could break the needle. When your hand's sewing, of course, that's much less of a concern. trim this one as well. I don't know if I've already said it but we are sewing along the lines that we've drawn so right on that line I'm sewing. Okay uh, yeah there's the second ear um, and uh, as you're turning everything inside out uh, feel for holes as well like if there is a hole uh, then you might have to go over it twice. Okay, those are the ears done. Um, next up, uh, I'm just going to do the face because it's easy. Uh, you can sew this up in any order that you like. Um, there's not really any uh, any specific uh, set order that you have to follow. So I'm going to start with this dart, if you remember. Um, so it's a bit hard to see, but we have and this dart, that was this triangle that we folded in half. Uh, and I'm going to start right there and sew to there. Oh, that's funny, the, the green paint is staining the white uh, thread. <laughs> anyway, okay, what you'll be left with is something like this. Um, oh, it's, it's too hard to see. Like this, through the light. Uh, but you'll be left with something like this. Uh, and what happens is if you turn this inside out, um, you'll have a uh, uh, like a point that is a little bit higher than the rest so if you lay this flat okay, we have like a, a bump almost that's just gonna naturally exist there now that we've sewn the dart uh, which is the purpose of it okay now i'm gonna sew the side of the face to the front of the face um, and we are going to sew along this first bit right there that we pinned the next bit we've sewn, we've sewn this line the next line goes down what we want to do is we want to find this point and we're going to pull it up so that it aligns with this line so we will not be sewing from here to here we'll be sewing from here to here so you want to pull this upwards so you have something like this going on.
If you're not too confident about lining this up, you can also start from here. If you want to make it easy, you can pin it. So I'm just going to find this point where it dips down. And if I just stick it through, it comes out here instead of there. So we're going to pin it right there. And then we're just going to sew from there to where we've already sewn. Now we have another line that's kind of like this. Pin it again. You don't have to pin this, um, but I'm pinning it now because this fabric tends to slide a lot, which I've said a thousand times already. Um, but I prefer it down so that is not a problem. If you've done everything right, uh, these two should line up. So again, find this point, that point, and just sew it. Then what you should be left with is something like this, which is kind of hard to see, but we have the line that goes along there, it dips down here, and it goes down straight, and then it dips down a little bit here. And that's the side of the face. So um, now I'm just going to do the other side. Um, I'm going to do the exact same thing, just mirrored. And I might actually start from here instead, because um, that's easier. Easy to, to line up.
all don't be alarmed if it doesn't line up exactly if the line you've sewn on here li uh, lines up very well with the, the line you've drawn on here but if you flip it over it doesn't line up exactly uh, like what's happened here if the line is a little bit above uh, this one that's perfectly fine there's no need to worry about that um the only thing uh you'd uh wants to make sure is that there is some seam allowance above here um yes so when this is turned inside out uh we now have a face uh that is attached to the top of the face the side of the face attached to the top of the face okay now we're gonna turn it um outside inside out inside out again <laughs> no yes um, <laughs> and then we're going to sew from here all the way to a roughly run there. We we'll want to keep this part open, so we're not going to sew this part, but we are going to sew from there to there. Again, I'm going to use a pin to help. To get to the, to the part where the top of the face, the and both sides of the face meet, um, you might want to fold it as flat as you can get it, uh, and very carefully sew over it. Don't push any. Uh, if it's too thick, don't push it through the sewing machine. Just wait for it to feed through. If you end up with a small hole there, that's fine. You can always uh, sew it by hand later. That's no problem. Okay, and now when we turn it inside out, we have a little snoot right there. Um, but what you might notice is that it's a, it's a little bit indented. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to trim the seam allowance here. We're not going to trim it all the way down to the seam, but we're just going to, just like we would, we did with the ears, we're just going to leave like roughly half a centimeter, um, and then uh, it should be able to uh, uh, to point out to me. something like this. You don't have to trim the seam allowance anywhere else because it's it doesn't really matter that much. If you really like the look much better, um, or if your fabric uh, is much more uh, like shoot it for that sort of thing um, if it improves the look for you feel free to do it if it doesn't don't worry you don't have to do it um, okay yeah now we have a little face isn't that cute isn't that just adorable okay um, now if we want we can install the ears so I have my ear over here I'm gonna find the slits that we cut and you can either just put it in uh, like this without doing any folds you can just put it in uh, and it'll look like so it's a bit tricky. it'll look like like this Yeah. Or what you can do is you can fold it and you'll have a smaller, uh, an ear that's a little bit smaller um, and has a little indentation here. Um, so it has a little bit more depth. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, what I'm going to do is going to find the slit. Um, and it doesn't really um, matter, uh, but you can do it however way you like. I like doing it this way, 
where the uh, inside of the ear is pointing uh, pointing outwards. This is where the nose is going to be, pointing outwards like this. So I'm just going to position it the way I like. I'm going to flip this inside out. And I'm just going to lie it flat like this. And make a, a little sandwich, basically, where like there is uh, the top of the face, an ear, and then the top of the face again. And I'm just going to sew from there to there. Just sew that slit shut with the ear inside. I'm going to pin it down. And this is another thick bit that your sewing machine might not enjoy sewing through. So if you have, um, if you find that you're having trouble with it, uh, don't force your sewing machine to do it. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You just do it by hand. There's no uh, shame in that or problem with it, about that. And if you're not sure if it's secure enough, you can go over it again. I'm just going to go over it twice just to make sure. turn it inside out or outside outside in inside <laughs> when you turn it right side out you should be left with a cute little ear so we have an adorable little otter ear right here so um later uh, i'm going to attach it uh differently so it looks like an otter's ear because right now it's just gonna flopping um but we'll get there later just like focus on which direction you wanted to point and what rough shape you want to have I'm going to do the same with this side. I hope it's clear enough uh, how to, to um, fit this one in the slit. Because um, this can be a little bit tricky. And if you have any questions, um, you can always message me on Instagram.
Halloween. Now we have a cute little also face. Isn't that adorable? Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Okay, um, up next, I'm going to do the body. Um, so, uh, I have the body right here, or like one of the two. Um, and we are going to start wherever we, wherever we want, basically. I think we're going to start right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from here all the way up there, or from up here all the way down here and remember to keep this open up right here this bit open Okay, now this bit is sewn um, shut, uh, and we're going to skip this part and move to this bit, and we're going to sew from there all the way to here, so like that. Like this, like this. And we're going to stop right there.
Now this bit is all the way shut and we're going to do the last bit which is from here to there to there. That's all. That is the body, uh, at least half of the body sewn up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim again until we're about half a centimeter away from the, um, the seam uh, and I'm going to especially uh, cut like a slit uh, right here at these angles. Uh, these acute, is that the word? Um, <laughs> At these sharp angles, we're going to uh, make sure we cut uh, as most as, as much of the um, uh, the seam allowance away as possible, so that this uh, doesn't bunch up right here. Um, just be careful that you don't cut the seam. Yeah, so here's what I mean. And then we have the foot and the leg, and I've cut as much as I can away from that seam. So, if you want to turn this inside out, not inside out, the right side out, <laughs> you get a cute little foot right here. It doesn't have like the fabric bunching up and wrinkling over there. We're going to do the other side of the body. We're going to do this one in the exact same way, uh, just mirrored.
now beside the body uh, sewn up I'm gonna do the same trimming of the seam allowance okay now this one has been trimmed and believe it or not we are almost done with the sewing all that's left to do is to install the paw pads right here okay so we're going to start with our pattern on one side of the body doesn't matter which one you start with and we're going to identify the front and the back feet because the front feet are smaller and the back feet are larger so if you know the tails over here i mean this is the back foot i'm going to grab one of the bl or back leg pieces and i'm going to lay it on I'm going to pull, so I have this, this back, I'm going to pull this apart, I'm going to lay this on top, like that. I'm going to pin the top of this down, like this. So what you're left with is this is the top of the foot, and this is the bottom of the foot. And we'll pin it right here. And then we're going to go along. Here's the bottom, this is the side. And we're going to pin this line to this line. And you can do it top to bottom or bottom to top. Doesn't really matter. You're going to find this point over here connects to this point here, where the, uh, where the B1 and B2 connect. And you're just going to pin this into place, just like with the other things, just like figure out where the line is, figure out where the other line is, and pin the points together. And eventually you should end up with something like this. Where you have the foot right here, and you have the bottom of the foot. It looks something like this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to sew from here all the way around over to there.
then you should end up, you know, with the same thing but attached. Then I'm going to trim the excess, just like we've done with everything else. Now we have a few little foot. I'm going to turn it inside out to check, see how it looks. There we have it. There's a foot. I'm just going to do this for all the three of the feet. And then we're done with the machine sewing. So, for the front foot, I'm going to grab FL1. One of them. And again, they're mirrored, so it doesn't matter which one. And I'm just going to pin it on. This is probably the trickiest part of the sewing. Uh, maybe the ears are tricky as well. But you can do it. I believe in you. And if you need any help, DM me on Instagram or at um, Saskia Sketches underscore stitches Now that's done, I'm going to turn it inside out to check. And it looks super cute. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, and then we'll be attaching both sides. And both sides of the body, uh, and then we'll be we'll be done with the machine sewing, and we can move on to uh, stuffing and detailing. There is fluff everywhere. <laughs>
going to pin these two at the same time and so at the same time. This is going to be one long video. <laughs> I hope it's been helpful if you're um, staying along. And if you do make an altar, please uh, share it to me. Uh, or share it on Instagram, tag me in it. Uh, show me, because I want to see. Alright, my recording cut off, um, but I uh, finished doing the feet and I now pinned the two body pieces together. Uh, it should be pretty obvious where they line up. Um, you can just start with the neck um, and like follow all the way along the back, along the tail, and then here at the belly, uh, right where the tail connects to the belly, we have that little triangle. You just connect it here and just follow along, just pin it together, pin it, pin it, pin it, pin it, pin it until you get to the end, and you should end up with an otter turned inside out. All right, now we're going to sew from here all the way along the back, all the way along the tail, all the way along the belly until we end up here again. Or you can do it the other way around, like so here and go here. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now, and then we'll be done with uh, the machine sewing.
hard to see anything. What's going on? I apologise. Um, but we're just sewing along the back here. That's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and trim some of the seam allowance, particularly in these kinds of bits right here where there's a lot of additional fabric. Um, but uh, most, uh, the, the ones that I would most uh, like to trim or advise trimming the most is around the tail here um, so that it can uh, come into a nice point. Um, because, you know, along the back and such, it doesn't matter that much. Um, but just those, those little areas 
um, that you want to have the correct shape, I would advise trimming. Okay, now I'm going to turn this inside out, uh, like a sock, almost. <laughs> Just from the hole where the head's going to attach and the neck, just turn it, turn it inside out. And get those feet out. And if you need to, uh, you can use a paintbrush. Uh, to help push out some of these um, these points, like the tail, for example. Like that. Okay. Use that brush. Don't push too hard, because you might break the seam, uh, like I said. Uh, but then we've got the tail. Oh my gosh, this is genuinely looking, looking so cute. I know, like, I hate working with this fabric, but it makes for such soft and cute stuffed animals. And I have to keep this one actually because I really like it so far. <laughs> Or make another one. <laughs> okay, now we have all oh, that's so cute. Look at that. Now we have the body of an otter. Isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh, he's so soft. And then we've got the head over here that we're just going to attach by hand in a minute. And we're going to have a cute little otter. Look at him. Oh, that's adorable. All right. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, I'm going to clean up all the fuzz. And uh, I'll see you in the next clip. Uh, I'm going to put the same machine away because we're not going to need this one anymore. Um, and then we're going to move on to stuffing. Let's go. Ooh, I'm so excited. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll see you in a sec. Okay. We're going to be installing some eyes. So. Uh, I want you to grab the face and identify where you would like to uh, place the eye. Um, for this one, I place the eye right above this, uh, right below this uh, this bump here. So you have the straight bit, you have uh, the 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 seam go where the seam goes upwards and then straight again. Uh, I placed it right there, um, and on this one that would be right there um, but you can place it wherever you want um, next I'm going to identify the size of the eye that I want um, I have here a selection of uh, brown eyes in different sizes and I'm just gonna Hold them up and see, like, is this too big? Is this too small? And just like think about it, like how how large of an eye do I want? Because uh, I think this is pretty nice, but uh, a larger one could look nicer. So just hold it up. See, like, yeah, I think that works the best. So, once you've identified where you want to place your eye and how large you want the eye to be, um, you can poke it in. So these safety eyes have little backing, uh, a sharp little back right there. And they also have these um, plastic washers that you can use to fasten them so uh, I'm gonna, gonna find the right size of washer because I want it to be 
You want it to be able to go on easily, um, and you don't want them to come off easily. Um, let's try and find one that fits. I'm going to find where I want to place my eye. This to, uh, the camera. I'm going to identify where I want to place my eye. I'm going to place my eye there and I'm going to poke it through. Um, depending on what kind of fabric you're using, uh, it might go through easily or you might have to uh, cut a little bit of the back. So I'm just going to push it through. And if it doesn't go through, I'll cut some of these threads. It's just generally this fabric doesn't resist too much. There it goes. And then you can turn around and have a look and check, see, do I like the placement of this eye? I think I want mine to go a little bit lower and a little bit more forward. So I'm going to pick the new spots and poke it through again. Might want to use some scissors if you can't get it through. Uh, I just lay them flat like this and just carefully cut like this. So they can go through. Yeah. And I like this better. So once you've got the eye in position, you can slide the, the washer over top. And if it slides on easily like this, um, have a look to see if you can get it off easily. And if you can get it off too easily, um, if you can get it off at all, uh, then you might want to use a smaller washer. So this one I can just pull off, um, which you're not supposed to be able to do that. So these washers are too large. I'm going to try this one, see if this one goes through. Yes, and this one is going to be a lot harder to remove. So once you've slid this one on, if you're not sure if it's all the way um, back, you can lay it flat on the desk and find some object to push it on. This one is this um this is a, a good example because it has uh, a little hole that slides over quite well and you can push down on it um, and you'll know uh, if it's on right if you can't wiggle anything around like if it's very if it's stuck um, then it's on properly so this one's on uh, and I'm going to do the other one. You want to pay close attention to where uh, you've done the first eye so you can line them up. I think that's in the position I want it in. I'm going 
grab another washer. And I'm just going to put it on that surface. And there it is. On. So now the face has eyes. Look at that, that's so cute. <laughs> right, uh, and now we're gonna move on to stuffing. Okay, now we're gonna move on to stuffing. Um, I am uh, going to take this uh, empty shell of an otter and we're going to put uh, the polyfill stuffing in here, like this stuff. And I'm also going to put some beads in the paws because I think that will be nice, maybe in the belly. Um, there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, the way that I like to do it is uh, keep the, the box uh, with the granules uh, on my lap. Um, I open the uh, <laughs> container. Um, and just be careful with this because you do not want this to go anywhere. If, if this falls, you'll be cleaning up beads for the rest of your life. So um, just be careful. I typically will uh, at least try and do this over the box. And I'll just grab a handful of granules uh, and find where I want to put them. So. Uh, put these in the, the back legs first it's hard to see but I've got a handful of granules and I just let them slide into the back leg uh, and you have to uh, offer a little bit of guidance to get them all the way in uh, but I think a handful or two is enough for, for one of these feet um, these granules that I have are sustainably farmed, uh, they are made from sugarcane um, that is uh, farmed in a sustainable way uh, that does not uh, impact uh, rainforest uh, growth and, and things like that. So if you can find it, um, that is uh, obviously preferable to uh, you know the the typical stuff that's used uh which is just you know the, the plastic um and uh, if you cannot find that uh, you might be able to find uh these things these are uh glass pals um and they uh, are more sustainable than the uh um then the uh, the plastic uh, beads but if you can only find plastic beads uh, that is also okay i think like it's, it's just like if you can if it's an option for you it might be nice to uh to use the more sustainable options um yeah so i'm just putting a couple Handfuls of beads into these back paws. This is uh, this is now kittens. And this is it's got a couple, a couple in there. This one has. The way that I do this with my larger plushes is I uh, will make a little pouch of a fabric that is kind of uh, uh, relatively thin and not going to and uh, fabric I'm not going to use for anything else or just fabric scraps. I uh, put the beads in those and I sew that up so that uh, and then I I put those uh, pouches in the paws or in the tail or in the belly where I want to use beads um, and that 
helps uh, keep everything contained so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, or just in case, you know, uh, one of these seam snaps, um, you won't have all the beads flying everywhere. Um, I don't do that for these smaller plushes because there's not as much in there, um, but that is something that you might want to do. Uh, also takes a bit more time, so that's why I don't do it for these. Um, but it is something you might want to consider. So these back holes are filled. And just take your time with this. Don't feel like I have to uh, do this all at once. Um, because again, like the cleanup will be much, much worse <laughs> if you drop any, so. I would um, advise you to take it slow. I think I might want to put a couple in the tail as well. I forgot to start my timer again. <laughs> in the belly. Um, I'm going to make sure this is closed, put this aside, um, and I'm going to plug up um, the legs and the tail with some polyfill stuffing. Um, this is going to keep these beads from falling uh, and uh, from, from getting out uh there now in the assigned <laughs> location um so that there i'm just going to stuff some stuffing right here in the leg so that this is blocked off basically and this can't get out Dude, look at this. That's such an otter. <laughs> 
I'm so happy with this, like how it's coming together. It really feels like an altar. I'm so happy. Dude, I want to keep them. <laughs> this sort of thing it's also uh, your choice how um, densely you want to stuff it I typically stuff a little bit lighter so the plush has a more uh, floppy kind of feel to it um, so it's slightly understaffed uh, so I'm gonna leave uh, the space between uh, the leg and the body right here I'm gonna leave a little bit of stuffing out so if you have this uh, this effect. <laughs> if you want, you can stuff it a little tighter. Um, see if this guy uh, is stuffed more tightly, and you'll get uh, a look that's a little bit more like this. You can stuff it however you like, basically. Um, if you want to make it more floppy, understuff. If you want to make it uh, more sturdy, overstuff. Uh, if you like a uh, happy medium in between, stuff it that way. Like, uh, just just do it uh, and, and kind of feel as you're going. Like. Is this too much? Is this, is this too little? Like, I'm trying to test, like, oh, do I like this amount of beads? Do I like this? Is this nicely stuffed for me? Do I want more? Do I want less? Um, just kind of a process like that. Just kind of feel, uh, feel it out as you go along. Okay, now I've, I've blocked off these uh, beads so that they're hopefully not going to go anywhere. Um, now I'm going to stuff the rest of the tail. As for the uh, polyfill stuffing, um, what I am using is uh, a hypoallergenic uh, pillowcase uh, stuffing. So what I do is I find a relatively cheap uh, hypoallergenic pillowcase, um, uh, or just a pillow, um, and uh, use that for the stuffing instead of um, buying uh, plushy stuffing, because usually what I find anyway is that that is very overpriced because um, I, I, I can get a whole pillow uh, a huge bag of stuffing basically for I want to say like seven or eight euro um, when if you if, if I was to just buy polyfill stuffing that would be a little bag like this for, for eight euro um, so buy cheap pillows do not <laughs> buy um, the actual like stuffing because it's the, it's the exact same thing that's in here um, I like using the hypoallergenic stuff because I am uh, personally allergic to dust uh, dust mites so uh, that's something that I like but there's also I also used uh, recycled stuffing so uh, there's pillows that have recycled stuffing in them that you can use um, that is is, uh, is is an option I don't want this, this end to be too thick. Uh, yeah, that looks cute. Yeah, you can just kind of wriggle this around a little bit if you uh, want to get a little bit more fluffy or like soft. Um, I like using this stuff because it doesn't clump together so much because usually you might be um, you might have to uh, do this with things to fluff it up a little bit, but this stuffing has already done that, and I uh, like has already done that. Is this stuffing is uh, already fluffy enough to where that's not necessary? And personally, my uh, <laughs> my sore hands thank you for that. So 
Uh, if you're disabled, that might be one to look into as well. Just look at what is the, um, uh, the easiest material to work with. Um, okay. Now, I've stuffed the tail, I've stuffed the feet, uh, what's left is the body. So, uh, what I think I want to do is I want to do a little bit more stuffing in the back end of the body, then I want to do some beads for the belly, and then put some more stuffing on top of there, and then some for the shoulders, and then for the neck. Um, so I'm just going to put some more stuffing in here, and we'll just figure it out as we go along. Once you get the stuffing, they really start coming to life. I'm very happy with this so far. Grab some more beads. I'll just go on hand for the time. There goes one. <laughs> about how much I want in there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna close this up and make sure it's closed. Then we're gonna block the rest of this off so no more so the beads will remain roughly in the same position. Um, I'll go wandering throughout the body. <laughs> but we don't want to overstuff it too much. Nice little fat otter. So I, I am going to put a lot more into the body and the uh, middle section. Right here. 
I'm just going to round out the shape. I'm not going to put too much because that might look strange also. Um, this fabric is a little bit stretchy. So the more you stuff it, um, the more it's going to bulge out. Um, and, and that's going to work for any fabric that's kind of stretchy. Um, so when you're working uh, with like uh, something like fleece, um, you might want to keep that in mind when you're stuffing. Uh, like it's going to, uh, how, how much stuffing you put in there is drastically going to affect the look of the plush. Okay. Oh dude, this is turning out so well. I'm very happy with this. Uh, okay, that's the body. Now I'm going to do the shoulders. Again, for this more floppy uh, look, um, you'll want to uh, understuff the areas you want to bend. So I want the leg to bend here, so I haven't really put any stuffing in like this general position, right? This, um, which gives this this floppy look. If you would want, you could also understuff this part, and you would have a more floppy body like this. Uh, it would be able to like flop like that. Um, that is something you can do. Uh, or you can understuff it here so you have a more floppy tail. Um, and if you don't want any flop, then uh, make sure to stuff those areas uh, extra. I'm going to put a little bit more stuffing in this general area, the shoulder area, um, to take advantage, to kind of take advantage of this, uh, um, what do you call it, this um, a property of the fabric that stretches out so we can have some shoulders or some more defined shoulders. I hope you can see that. It's never going to be super defined because this is a very simple pattern, um, but that can give you at least a look. going to take a little bit of that out because I don't want a super, super buff <laughs> Um, Yeah, once you're happy with uh, the placement of the stuffing uh, you, in the body, you can do the neck. And I'm again going to leave a little bit less stuffing right around so we can have a more flexible neck.
And now we have a stuffed otter. Isn't these so cute? Oh my god. I am very, very happy with them. He looks very cute. Uh, and now we're gonna stuff the face. So, face. Um, this is fairly easy. You just stuff as much as possible into the face as you can. <laughs> Uh, again, this is also going to come uh, depend on how much uh, your fabric stretches. But I typically hard stuff the face, so I, I uh, put a lot of stuffing in there. Once you're satisfied with the amount of uh, stuffing you have uh, done for the face, you, you can go attach the face to the body. Um, I'm going to check. I'm going to see if okay, there's too much stuffing here, so I'm going to take some out and put it back. Just to check, like, is this going to attach properly? If I have it. If it's I don't want to take out the meat a bit more. Yep. Also, don't worry if your face looks like it's too big for the body. Uh, once it's attached, it'll look smaller because we're going to we're going to attach these bits, and we're also going to thread sculpt, so it's going to look a little bit smaller later. Uh, okay. Yeah, now it's it's attaching our assembly time. I am going to find a thread that I want to use. Um, I think I'll use this one. I've got a double thread thread that I've knotted, so there's there's two. Oops. Maybe you can see that there's two, uh, and there's the knot. Um, and then I'm gonna find the top of the face. This has a dart right here. I'm gonna find the end of that which comes together like that if you remember and I'm gonna stick the needle through so now I've got the head on the string and then I'm going to to the body I'm gonna find the seam between the two uh, B1 pieces so I find that seam and that's where I'm gonna stick the needle through So when you draw it together, the head attaches there. Now I'm going to go back here. So now it is attached and it doesn't easily budge. I'm going to just pull this as tight as possible and then I'm going to go to 
the chin where the F2 pieces meet and where we left this open. I'm going to find where they meet and that's where I'm going to uh, stick the needle through. And we'll end up with something like this with the, um, the thread going from here to here. And then I'm going to find where B2 needs B2, right there, and that's where I'm going to push the needle through, pull it through. Gonna have the same thing going on. Move that to there. And I'm going to stick it through again. Right here. And again. Right there. And I'm going to pull this tight as well. I don't know if my thread's long enough for this. Um, I think it will be, yeah. So now we're going to go to where the top of the face meets the side of the face, either side. Uh, and we're going to go through here and where this lines up. So it's not gonna line up exactly uh, with this this color, so it's going to be more like this rather than like this. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, let's check and see where it lines up. And then attach it. Other thing, the same thing on the other side. Uh, I'm just going to um, switch my thread. And if that you're using doesn't really matter that much, uh, as long as you can um, put a bit of force on it and it shouldn't snap.
This stretch can be very annoying because <laughs> it tangles a lot, but it's very strong. So I can see if that makes sense. Same on this side where we're going to attach this bit to this bit. Now you should have your uh, the head of the plush anchored to four different points of the body of the plush. We have an anchor here, an anchor here, an anchor here, and an anchor here. Uh, and now we're going to ladder stitch through, uh, like all the way around. Uh, so from one point to the, to the next. Um, and we're gonna attach the heads like that. Um, I personally like to use the ladder stitch. If you don't know what that is, just look it up. Um, it's fairly easy to learn um because it makes for a um, more seamless look uh, where it hides the, uh, the thread for the stitches very well um so that's what i'm going to use again you can use whatever's comfortable for you um but, you know, you, you can find whatever way you want to use, uh, you want to attach the, the, the head to the plush if you, if you want, you could even do it with the sewing machine and then leave a hole in the belly or in the back uh, that you want to stuff it through. Uh, this is the method that I prefer using, you can use whatever method you like, it's a very simple pattern, you can put it together in a number of different ways, um, so do whatever's most comfortable for you. So it looks kind of silly, maybe a bit too big, um, but there is a bit of seam allowance here, um, uh, which will make for a uh, smaller head once you've attached it. Um, and like I said, with the thread sculpting a bit as well. Um, which is going to draw the eyes close together, uh, draw uh, the top of the head to the bottom of the uh, jaw. So uh, don't worry. Uh, so it's it, of course it's going to look uh, a little bit ridiculous, like it's been stung by a bee in the face, in the nose. <laughs> But don't worry we'll fix all of that that's perfectly normal and if you like this look you can also just totally keep it that way
So now I've attached the top of the head right there. And we're gonna attach the rest. When we get to this uh, part of the bottom of the face, you might want to tuck some of the additional seam allowance into this uh, slit, um, so you know where you want to sew.
Okay, now I've attached this to here. Well, let's, let's attach, attach this to this. Almost done. If you want um, your stitching to be extra secure, you might want to go around another time and just bladder stitch a second row uh, just to make sure it's attached uh, as securely as you can get it um, but it's not necessary I, I do it sometimes with this one I don't think it's necessary but um, some plushes really benefit from that Okay, now the head is attached uh, and you might want to just use your fingers and check for holes like is there anywhere that doesn't feel as secure you can want to reinforce a little bit more it's like, or if it is it uh, the security you want it uh, I think mine's good okay uh, then we're going to do the ears because right now we still have these, these little monkey ears right here. Uh, we're going to want to make them look more like otter ears. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ear, I'm going to twist it like this, and then I'm going to put it down like that. Um, right there into that seam. And I'm going to attach the back to there. So it's more upwards like that. Yeah. And of course this is all personal preference, so if you like these little monkey ears you can absolutely keep them.
and I'm just going to attach this the same way that I attached the head to the body. So now we have this ear and this ear. I'm going to do the same with this one. Now we have two otter ears. Isn't it so cute? Uh, but still has a very uh, bulged out face. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the top of the head uh, where this dart, and where we've sewn this dart, where it points upwards. We're going to find this bit. I'm going to uh, attach. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, poke the needle through. Okay, and we're going to anchor our thread on this point. So I'm just going to poke it through again. And I'm going to poke the needle through this point all the way to where the Two B2 pieces meet, so end and face. So we have this uh, where the face, uh, the F2 piece is split. We're going to find this point right there, and that, that's where we're going to poke the needle through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the top of the face down. So let me see if we can show this. Um, I'm just going to go down like this. It's kind of hard to show. Uh, <laughs> and you see, you see that? It's, gonna, it's going down. You're going to push this bit down. Or pull this bit down. Um, and we're just going to attach or anchor this thread again here at the pull down position. So you're going to put a little bit of tension on there, pull this bit down, hold this down, and then make a knot there. should be permanently pulled down a little bit like right that. Then we're going to go to the chin, uh, which is like I think halfway from the eye to the nose. We're going to go right there, that point. Now we're going to anchor it here. And we're going to go straight up, so from here to here. And we're going to give him a little chin.
You might want to do it a little bit farther backwards. Just make sure you're pulling this point up to here instead of this point down to here. gonna have a flat pancake face. <laughs> We're gonna anchor it up here. And now we're going to go to the front of the eye, right there. there at the front and then we're going to the other front of the eye or like the other eyes front it's probably better to put that <laughs> and then we're going to go back to the other eye also at the front And then look at this. We're going to draw this closer together. So we now have these eyes indent a little bit. I'm going to go to the seam right on top of the eye and put the needle through, and that's where I'm going to anchor the thread. Now I'm going to go to the back of the eye. I'm going to do the same thing again. Right back. But this time I'm not going to pull as hard. So I'm going to do a little bit of... Pulling it close, but I'm not going to do too much. So we now have the eye that's kind of sunken in a little bit more into the washer space. Now to look from the top, we have more of like an, an otter shape or from the bottom, from the side. This looks much more like an otter. Um, there's a couple other things that you can do to make this even more otter-like if you want. You can, uh, you can flatten the pores with the thread sculpting or um, could draw uh, this closer together. I think I might just do that. Um, uh, actually, maybe not because I feel like yeah. I mean, you could you could uh, 
uh, do a, th uh, a thread from here to here and back and then pull this closed. Um, a thread from here to here, back to there and pull this closer. So you have a little bit more of a, uh, an attached face. Though this to me looks a little bit more rat-like than otter-like. This looks more otter-like. Um, yeah, something else you can do, you can give them the little flat feet. Um, because I've got beads in mine, I want to keep them nice and squishable, I guess. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Um, and there's other things you can do if you want. You can add a tag. Uh, you would have to do that during sewing, but uh, or like afterwards, also fine. But I think that this baby is done. I am very, very pleased with how it turned out. Um, look at that little man's. He's got a cute little belly, floppy legs. Cute little tail, cute little face. Look at that, isn't that adorable? I'm gonna uh, anchor this thread uh, and cut it off and then we are done with our little otter. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you make an otter uh, with my pattern, please, or like an otter in general, please tag me on Instagram. Uh, I would love to see it. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, message me on, on Instagram as well. Um, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer. You can find the pattern in the description. I'm not going to change anything because I think it's, uh, it's, it's good. Um, and yeah, uh, have a great weekend, guys. And keep on sketching. Thank you for watching. And subscribe if you want to. Uh, goodbye. Forgot to mention, but you can also totally embroider on the nose and the mouth. I personally prefer it like this, but you can definitely do that. Uh, okay, goodbye. Subscribe. Bye. <laughs>